We're beginning to see symptoms of demographic decline, birth rate collapse in Britain. And I was first alerted to this by this Guardian article saying that more than 90 English primary schools are having to close, not due to a lack of funding, but due to a lack of pupils. And it's quite surprising considering mass immigration has put a stress on plenty of resources, the NHS, infrastructure, transport, sewage system even. But this is pretty alarming. The one thing it isn't putting stress on in some areas is schools. So in this article, it says more than 90 English primary schools, many of them in cities and towns. So it's not just the rural areas that are being depopulated. It's very unusual. This this did, when you told me about it before we started recording, it really did take me by surprise. It's just like, surely they're going to be building way more. Like, aren't we talking about the, the Tories who are overseeing the concreting over of our beautiful island? I think that population density is localised to certain areas, particularly the communities which Callum has gone over on the census maps before, that show that they're overwhelmingly minority English. Mm -hmm. But even those communities are experiencing birth rate decline as well. And we'll get into their countries of origin uh, of how some of the countries that you're not expecting are following the same UK trend are all in lockstep. And it's really alarming. So they're risking closure because more than two thirds of them are empty, according to the Guardian analysis of the government data. The analysis showed 88 primary schools in England were more than two thirds empty last year, leaving, leaving them to danger of closure. On average, the vacancy rate, the proportion of unfilled places, recorded by the 156 schools that have closed since 2009 to 10 in their last year of operation was 66%. A further four primary schools were already proposed to close. The analysis deliberately excludes schools that opened in 2021, as the process to fill places at a new school can take some time. So this isn't just new schools that have opened and then closed because they haven't had new enough prescriptions. These are schools that have been opened for quite some time and then still can't attract enough pupils. And this is, as well, after lockdown. So this was the lockdown baby boom that people would have expected to happen going into nurseries by now just hasn't manifested. And this is, of course, due to economic pressures, people feeling that they can't buy a house, have a stable job. Inflation is, is knocking back their family planning by quite a few years. But all of these fiscal and demographic dominoes are falling in one direction, and it's quite alarming. Across England, there were more unfilled primary school places than in any year since 2009-2010, the equivalent of 570,000 pupils, or 11.5% of total capacity. The Department for Education is expecting the number of pupils at state-funded schools to decline by 944,000 over the next decade. It's nearly a million. Yeah. And that's not due to homeschooling, because they're trying to ban homeschooling. Genuinely really worrying stuff. Like, and they're trying to undermine private schools as well, so it's... yeah. State schools, that they're, they're trying to push these and the numbers are also declining. Yes. And judging by the quality of materials coming out of state schools, we know that they're also terrible for the kids that do survive either not being mm -hmm. aborted or never having been made in the first place. Certainly in general, though, it very much depends on the teacher, I think. I, I think the, time. the ubiquity of sex education materials, for example, has deterred mm -hmm. plenty of parents for just reason for wanting to send their kids into these schools at all, if not unsupervised. I think... But, um, if, if you're going to send your kids to a state school, maybe a, a grammar school, where at least they expect... I went to a grammar school, it's terrible. Some of them are, some of them are mm -hmm. really bad. Loads of them become academies, and so they're allegedly mm -hmm. all on the take, and teachers' eyes are off the ball, and so they outsource a lot of their resources to outside companies which have these exact kind of ideas in the sex education sphere, for mm -hmm. example. So grammar schools are not really any better either. The education system I, is just I, failing kids. I went to a regular old state school and I know people in the comments sometimes call me posh Josh, but no. Well, same with me. I'm, mm. I, I went to a South East London grammar, but it was selective. It wasn't privately funded. you know. Mm -hmm. So again, if I'm referred to as posh, no, no. <laughs> I'll make about the same as my dad does. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> there we go. And that's not much, by the way. Across England, the number of children enrolled had fallen in more than a quarter of primary schools, with some schools, 80 of them, re registering decreases of more than 50% in pupils since 2009 2010. Since 2009, about 160 schools had closed and 570 had merged, analysis of the Department for Education figures showed. So lots of schools as well are only staying open by combining their forces because they just can't make up the class numbers. During the 2021 to 2022 academic year, there were 16,791 primary schools in England. It's estimated the number of pupils enrolled in reception will decrease by 5% across England by 2026 to 2027. Reception, by the way, is ages four to five for our American viewers. You read my mind. With some local authorities seeing the youngest pupils down by almost 20%. These include Lambeth in London, Brighton and Hove, obvious <laughs> reasons, York and the Humber. 
In some areas, it's estimated the number of reception age children could halve within the next five years. So half the population of four to five year olds. That's unbelievable. That is collapse levels. That's, when that filters through the that's system. That's so rapid as well. Like, yeah, that's that, a precipitous population decline. And mm-hmm. that's been onset by lockdown, of course. That's really bad. But this is a trend that has been going this way for well over a decade. Cough, cough, behavioural sink. You're probably not wrong, but there are some other factors we can look at slightly later. So just go on to the UK's birth rate. This is from the Office of National Statistics for 2021. This is the most up-to-date release. There were 625,008 live births in 2021, an increase of 1.5% from the 615,557 live births in 2020, but still well below the 2019 number. Again, hasn't recovered since lockdown. 2021 remains in line with the long-term trend of decreasing live births observed before the COVID pandemic. The total fertility rate in 2021 was an estimated 1.61% children per woman, compared with 1.58 in 2020, the first time since 2012 that the total fertility rate has increased. But in 2020, because of the rate of birth rate decline, it was the first year on record that there were more pensioners than newborns. That's um, not a sustainable um, balance, is it really? No. And it's also um, probably worth mentioning that the fact that the pandemic is a key cutoff might indicate that this is... um, perhaps an economically motivated thing yes. uh, in the, of course, economic self-sabotage pandemic. I mean, it, it would make sense. Also, you weren't allowed to start any new relationships under lockdown if you're following the rules, unless you're mm-hmm. Matt Hancock, of course. <laughs> and, and so for those who don't know, the demographic replacement rate is 2.1 births per woman. So we're about 0.5 beneath that and have been for quite some time. I mean, it's only getting worse. So why don't we just import a population, right? You'd think all of the immigrants' kids would be filling up the schools. So if we go to this next one, this is about immigration from the ONS. And if we go to the um, number seven point, which is called population change, this is net migration for the UK in 2022. In 2022, net migration added to the UK population 606,000 more people arriving long-term than leaving. This is an increase of 118,000 compared with 2021, 488,000, and nearly double that of the pre-coronavirus pandemic levels, with net migration estimated to be 333,000 in 2018. So it's doubled in about four years, and it's going to go up to a million again, nearly doubling this year net. So net migration in 2022 was attributed to non-EU nationals, 666 thousand in 2022, an increase of 164,000 compared with 2021. Now, you'd think that these are the countries with the much higher population density. Um, They have much higher birth rates in sub-Saharan Africa and Asia. India, for example, has just become the largest population uh, country in the world. And Liz Truss was contemplating free movement with India at one point to get a trade deal. That's absolutely insane. It's like an entire subcontinent of... I mean, it's the most populous country in the world now, isn't it? It's well over a billion people. Mm Mm-hmm. However, India has the same trend. India is sub replacement birth rate. Not a lot of people know this. This is very alarming Mm -hmm. that pretty much every country is going to be this way. And again, I don't want to import a giant population of people. You have cultural incompatibilities. You have immediate resource needs. But the idea that politicians are going to fix this by just importing every other country, well, every other country is going to need to import from every other country. And so it's Mm -hmm. not going to be sustainable for anyone. And if we go to this article from the New York Times, they've picked up on this this week. Overcrowded India, one state in India, is desperate for more babies. So they're following similar policies to what other countries are also investigating. Again, India, that everyone thinks is massively crowded and overpopulated, will be going the same way as the UK by about 2050. While India as a whole of 1.4 billion people and growing will soon become the most populous country in history, I believe it already has, the situation in Sikkim has gotten so dire that the local government is essentially paying people to have babies. In Sikkim, the birth rate has plummeted, officials say, for a different reason, a lack of economic opportunity, which often forces men and women to search for jobs outside the state, leading to marriages later in life. The exact same thing happening in the UK. It's a symptom of economic development. And of course, lots of them are migrating to the West. So we are incentivizing this problem happening over there, despite trying to extract a solution from that country. Officials in the state, Sikkim, want couples to have at least three children. Government stats show that women are having 1.1 on average during their reproductive years, well under the national rate of two, and below the national rate, uh, below the rate needed 2.1 to, st- to maintain a steady population without migration. So they're half the birth rate for replacement rate, and the overall birth rate 
has gone down on trend by 0.1% uh, below the replacement rate. So again, India's below replacement rate now. Same with Bangladesh, same with Sri Lanka. Not going to be able to import the solution. So Kim's government is overseeing a new program that pays for about $3,600 for a first round of IVF treatment and around $1,800 for a second attempt. One couple, Yogesh and Rupa Sharma, jumped at the opportunity for Mrs. Sharma to undergo a round of IVF at government expense after five failed attempts. Blimey. Yeah, this is something that's very common now because women were lied to and said you can freeze your eggs, you can wait until your late 30s, the quality and chances of conception won't matter, you can have it all. And they have been lied into something that later, we'll talk about this, is unplanned childlessness. And this is an epidemic that's going to hit people harder than we expect. Mr. Sharma said he wanted to talk openly about his own family's IVF experience to encourage people to give it a try. Childlessness can feel very lonely, he said. Our population is shrinking fast. Only science can help us. I would suggest that material advancement and the pursuit of self-enrichment and self-actualization is why a lot of people are delaying having family until later in life. There's also the compounding economic factors as well. That there's we've really lots on. and lots of things that go into it, I think. Yeah. Um, my kind of understanding of it is that it innate in all, all animals is a sort of population density cap whereby if populations get too dense in certain areas, um, they, they stop. This is what we covered in the uh, Rat Utopia experiment, isn't it? Yes. That population density triggers um, unconscious drives to alter your behavior in ways that are not conducive to the sustainability of your civilization. I think that that's fair to say, and this is present in, in all animals as far as I understand. And so it might be that we have created these cities that are hell holes in my opinion. I think cities are really bad for you psychologically mm. um, that are predisposing people not to have children, both um, for a multitude of different reasons, as well as the, the innate character of it being dense. So I, I would, think human beings are rural creatures. No, I agree. I would push back on that slightly because you might say that it's a manifestation of an unconscious population cap drive, but it's certainly not a conscious one. And mm. if you pay us five pounds a month, you can get access to all of our premium content. If you go onto the next tab, please. This is a free interview that everyone can watch with Stephen Shaw. He is the director of Birth Gap Childless World, a new documentary. The first part is available on YouTube. The other parts I have had the privilege to watch, but they're not available yet because he's working at a distribution deal. Stephen spent seven years going around the world interviewing people from different countries, demographers, politicians, couples who were childless, women who had reached um, beyond their childbearing years and wished they had children. And he decided to look at the data historical and also anecdotal, and understand why people were succumbing to what he calls the pandemic of unplanned childlessness. And he's calculated that by 2050, there's going to be over 800,000 people that have this. And of those people, 10% didn't want to have kids for climate change, for fur babies, whatever narcissistic reason, ideological reason. 10% couldn't have kids because of unforeseen fertility problems. 80% wanted kids but never had them because they didn't find the right partner. Didn't... Uh, defer their career or education in time, and so time just passed them by. Or they thought economic factors weren't conducive to having a family, even though they really wanted them. And so there's some stuff from this documentary that's, that's really eye-opening. He's found that 70% of people now live in countries that have below replacement birth rates. Only sub-Saharan Africa has birth rates higher than 2.1 child per woman. However, sub-Saharan Africa is seeing one child per woman birth rate drops every 10 to 15 years. So even sub-Saharan Africa is trending in the same way. So it's a global trend. Then. It is, yes. It seems to be something common to human humanity. It's like a global extinction event that's slowly being rolled out across cultures and countries. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think it's going to come to an extinction. I think there will be, it will drop to some point and then either balance out or we'll be conscious enough of the problem that we'll do something about it because we're not going to just sleepwalk into extinction. Well, we currently something are. That is, massively generational but yeah I, I think but it's also going to cause a hell of a lot of suffering when the inverse population pyramid realizes that there's no one to pay for the boomer entitlement programs as that's well. very true yeah so a lot of people are going to unnecessarily die as well as lots of people never having been born and that's terrible and he found this trend started about the 1970s with the the oil crisis that hit japan very hard hit germany and italy very hard and since have never recovered so he does think that the front loading of education in women's fertile years, the focus on career, which is a product of feminism, of course, 
but also economic factors that have been exacerbated by governments and poor fiscal policy have created conditions which make people averse to starting their families earlier. And because they delay them till later in life, egg quality is worse. The risk of fetal loss from a mother increases to 22% when she's 35, 32% at 40, and 54% age 45, and 83% age 50. So the later you leave it past your 30s, it's highly likely you're never going to have kids because of losses mm -hmm. or not meeting a partner. And he said that if you reach 30, there's a 50-50% chance that you'll ever have kids if you don't currently have kids. So um, not to get too personal here, yeah. but um, my parents got married in their, their 30s and, and had me um, sort of mid 30s. And then when they tried to have a, a, a child again, um, they had eventually had to go to adoption. And obviously I'm very grateful for my sister, but you know, they, they originally tried to have children and it, it didn't it didn't work. And yeah. although it, it can work and it's very individual um, based, some some women can have children well into their 60s, although I wouldn't advise that because, mm. you know, it's more likely that there's going to be health complications. Mm. But at the same time, you don't know how likely it is that you're going to have health problems. You can kind of tell um, based on family history mm. because, of course, a lot of this can be heritable, but not necessarily because sometimes um, people get conditions that simply can't be planned for. And it's very unfortunate, very tragic. And I've, I have heard plenty of stories of, of women who've really been trying to have children and they haven't, and it's really destroyed their self-esteem, their, yeah. their meaning in life, basically. And so I think people being cognizant of that and having making informed choices about their life is a, certainly a good antidote to this, or at least a first step in the right direction. Yeah, and I think the economy and education system should be restructured to a way which focuses on the creation of families and the continuity of civilization rather than the total workforce enrollment of everyone at the expense of having children. I think that would be a sensible thing to do. And this has resulted now, as the World Health Organization have put out, in the fact that one in six people have been affected by infertility. Now, this is not because of unspecified medical intervention necessarily, this is because lots of people have delayed the years that they are going to have children and therefore suffered either unforeseen health complications or just the effect of the passage of time on fetal viability. And so the message to take away here is please watch this interview with Stephen. Please watch his documentary. All of you people that are engaged in watching our content and, and formulating moral philosophies and trying to improve the world are probably the exact kind of people that would make really good parents. And so if you haven't got a start on it yet, you know, I'm going to try and do my best. Um, <laughs> It's just difficult at the moment, I can tell you, but go out You're and do so. Young. Well, yeah, but it doesn't always feel it. And the thing is, you have to get your life in order again at about the age of 30 because depending on how old your partner is and that, things are complicated. And, and there, are problems, there are problems for, for men too. Like he, he managed to highlight that. So, so go and watch Stephen's work and let's try and reverse the demographic decline that we'll all be paying for otherwise. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as premium videos. This one on daycare will destroy the West. And if you want to find out what else is being put out, you can follow it on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.